Hold up, hold up, you don't do drugs, what that mean? I said I wasn't trying to be lying What's that smell, what's that smell? Think that's my brain so sighing So before I get into this video guys, make sure you guys check out cinchgaming.com for all your best custom made controllers and accessories and type in Kamol Cinch 96 for 5% off all your gaming. So I'm Komodo Games HD and hopefully you guys enjoy this review or final verdict because I like the column of the first episode of season 4 of Game of Thrones. Now I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. Don't even know what his nickname for a Game of Thrones fan is. Say Game of Thrones fan, but I have to say this episode was really strong. Of course, there were some minor, minor things I could complain about, in which I'm definitely going to voice in this review. So, firstly, we get to um, our first look at Obrium or Prince Martel Obrium. <laughs> this dude is a freaking awesome. Now, reading him in the books and comparing him in the TV show, uh. One of the parts that really got me disturbed, but I, I knew it was coming, like, either <laughs> either they were going to try and avoid it or go full-blown out with it, and they went full-blown out with it, and Prince Obrium is, like, literally a um, bisexual. Now, I'm not against gays or anything or anybody with sexuality, but I was hoping they were going to try and avoid that because it was always alluded to in the book that he seduced guys just as he seduced women, and it's like, ah, uh, man, it's kind of fucked up. So, they kind of introduced them. They showed his hatred towards the Lannisters and about why he hates them due to the fact that the Malin, if you guys are not sure who the Malin is, it's the Hound's brother, um, raped and killed his sister and his niece and nephew, which was pretty insane, fucked up, if you ask me personally. Um, truthfully, I was just you know, astound by how much they were doing. Um, Jamie really shined in this episode. Uh, Jamie Lannister, he really shined due to the fact that everybody's coming at his throat due to, due to the actual fact that he was supposed to return the uh, Stark girls back to his like to their family. But since their family died last season, you know, she does. It's not really much left. Um, you know, Stanza is now a uh, Lannister. Uh, Arya, nobody knows where she's at. Bran, it, that's another thing. Rand and um, Rickon did not get notes, no, like literally no spot in this episode. Nor did Theon, which was a little confusing. But they did give Ygritte and the you know Wildlings actual fucking you know spot and gave them a good you know portion of the episode, a good ten minutes. Um, but the episode did move really quickly. Uh, Tyrion, as always, you know he was getting chewed out by his father and everybody else, which was a little funny to see. Uh, it's actually, it was pretty cool to see Tyrion finally see some fear in his face that he was terrified by Obrium, and most likely, um, ho I'm hoping they don't try and blame, you know, because in the books, I'm not going to ruin anything, but in the books, they blame, they, they, they don't blame anybody on a certain murder that's going to happen, a certain major murder that's going to happen soon, or death, or assassination, or whatever you want to call it, on a certain somebody, hopefully they don't try and to, I, I guess you could say, destroy that. So hopefully they try to stay true. A lot of people were saying there's major changes that's going to happen towards the end of the season, which I'm hoping they don't really change a lot. Um, the dragons finally came, but they weren't doing fuck knows what. Um, you know, um, your or your amount. He actually did make a really good uh, point that dragons can't be tamed to Khaleesi or uh, you know, like it was real interesting to see that. Uh, fuck, what's her name? I totally just blacked out and forgot. Um, fucking, uh, Amelia Clark's character's name. Damn, I forgot her name. I seriously just did. <laughs> but, cause I'm gonna call her Khaleesi from fucking. So, you know, Khaleesi even knows that her dragons are on fucking team too. And, it's, you know, it's a matter of time before they turn against her. But that was really about, they really didn't show anything when it came to, they, they were more focused on Westeros and more or less King's Landing. Cause that's where most of the major players are at the moment. Um, we did get to see some Jon Snow action where, you know, he was getting on trial for, you know, killing one of his fellow brothers of black, which was, just, you know, interesting to see. Uh, it was funny that uh, Aegon uh, actually kind of defended him. I, I saw him defending him, but, you know, at the same time, still trying to remember stuff I remember from the freaking books. It's a little weird. I can't fucking remember her name. That's weird. I can't remember Khaleesi's actual name. It's just, I don't know. 
I, I guess nobody really calls her that. Ain't like her by her real name, so I just for, forgot too. But this episode was really, really strong when it came to character development. Uh, we got to see we got them see about eighty percent of the characters from last season. Uh, one of the best parts in this whole episode was the Hound and Arya when they went to this little pub and she spied this guy that took her sword from all the way back in season two. Now, no, this is like two years ago and she spied this guy who, you know, we didn't really get to see that much after the event and he took her sword and then we finally get to see him like, like her again with her sword. Uh, after, uh, so basically what happened, I'm just going to go into the story if you guys haven't already, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. The Hound and Arya find out, that, you know, they're, you know, they don't find out, but they're hungry, and they go to this pub, Arya tries to get her sword back. Once she gets her, tries to get her sword back, she's like, uh, Hound kind of gets into the situation where he's sort of have to go in the pub now, because he was like, I don't want to go in there, because it's four dudes, so it's about four or five dudes, I don't feel like killing them. I'm like, no, the Hound can kill these fuckers, it's just that he doesn't have the time, like, he's hungry, he doesn't feel like fucking doing it and they go in there you know the guys start talking bullshit and then the fight happens and we finally we can see how do some action he's getting his ass kicked which is kind of rare to see that how he can actually get his ass kicked on a regular um after that you know Arya finally goes full killer mode or i guess you could say faceless man mode and she just starts killing you know she kills about two guys Exactly, I think exactly two guys. She kills one dude with a bronze sword, and then she um, hits the one dude that took her sword with the um, with a bra and takes her sword back. And she kind of you know monologues what he said to her, you know, to that two years ago, which is really fun to see when they bring back things from like two or three seasons ago. And she kind of just stabs that dude right in the fucking throat, like literally just stabs that guy in the throat. It was insane, man. Well, so I was like, Jesus Christ, that's good, you know. And she, and crazy part was, she enjoyed it. So, I guess they're alluding to her becoming a uh, spoiler territory, spoiler territory. That's what I'm about to go to. Um, her becoming a faceless man, actually, which was pretty interesting. You know, I guess you could call her a faceless woman or faceless girl. Either way, hopefully, she does end up in Bravo sometime in the season. I'm um, not sure what happens to Helm, though. I forget what happens to Helm for some reason. Um, but hopefully they do try and not do major changes. But the interesting what part was um, George R. R. Martin actually said a few uh, months back that, you know, if he wants to finish the Game of Thrones, you know, the TV show, they wanted to do either a featured movie, like a full old triple A movie, or do a blown out, um, you know, just whole three another two seasons of this like a part one part two kind of like how walk on um, breaking bad did which was really cool but hopefully you know they already know how the story's going to end because they did you know rr martin did give him you know the ending and everything how the book is supposed to end so in case he dies or something because he is old of course um they don't know how to end the show without you know being like oh fuck how do we end it but you know, I really just say go watch the episode for yourself. If you guys not really got into Game of Thrones and you just watch this now, I highly suggest you get into it. But get into it, start with season one. You can you can easily get watch the episode. You can if you have HBO, just go. They you know they had marathon not too long ago. Most likely going to have another marathon sometime this week, probably this weekend for the next Game of Thrones. You know, Game of Thrones is going to be coming on every Sunday night at nine o'clock. Uh, you can check online, you can buy some, you know, the whole box set of whole seasons, like $50 for the whole three seasons. Go try that out. You know, it's a lot. Of, I highly suggest you begin to it. If you don't really want to get into the show, but you find interested in the story, then read the books. The books are interesting. They're like on book six now. Book, um, the, the sixth book actually released not too long ago. The next book, I'm not sure when it's coming out. I think the recent book's name is Feast for Crows. But that's about it from me, guys. Please rate and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this final verdict review. Um, and that's about it from me. So, peace.